I think it's I think the most critical thing to get across is all of this stuff depends on a good analyst. And if you don't have that, the model's not gonna think for you. It's it's just a bunch of zeros and ones. <laughs> um, uh, we're always under time constraints and computing constraints. There's always constraints on something. Fire is an uncertain business. You don't have all the information you'd like, and you don't have all the time in the world to make. You have to do what, do what you can in the time frame given with the questions that are posed. And this is where the analyst comes in. If if it wasn't um, if we had everything we needed and it was just a mechanical function to produce these fire behavior products, we wouldn't need a person to do it. So if you only have time to do 100 simulations, but you're asked a question that is beyond that, then it's incumbent upon the analyst to interpret the output and give a personal in insight into what the limitations of that simulation were. Okay, so if the analyst uh, has 20 minutes to get an output ready for a briefing, I'm just making that up, but um, then they have to say, well, in the 20 minutes I had, here's what I was able to do, and this is what it means to me. You can't get away from, from expertise and judgment and the ability to interpret uh, the fire behavior outputs given the question that's answered. Good analysts are cur have a lot of curiosity. They, they care about why things are happening and they care about representing those processes and, and understanding it. And the best analysts that I've worked with and, uh, over the years have, have been that kind of a person. They're just curious people. They're not trying to find an answer. They're not trying to find uh, a solution or put a product together simply to um, be a cog in the machine. They're curious about fire behavior and about how it's working, and they're fascinated by it. And that's not something you can really buy. It just is kind of born into a given analyst. Um, there are other kinds of analysts that see this as just a mechanical operation, that they're there to feed the machine the various data, turn the crank, and whatever comes out, um, they've done their job. And I think that's a disservice to, to the, the position, really. I don't think that that helps make good decisions. And I think it, um, the models uh, have well-recognized limitations and assumptions. Um, and, but a good analyst can use those and, and still make very good quality uh, informed uh, an analysis, make that available and help make good decisions. But a poor analyst can turn even a good model, even a good uh, projection, a good set of analysis into something that's useless. So uh, a good analyst can take fairly bad information, interpret it in a way that is still helpful to, uh, to the process. The analyst can make the difference in all of this and uh, n no model that I can foresee ever in the future in, in FIRE um, is going to be able to take the place of a good quality analyst. No matter how much physics we throw at this problem, the uncertainty about where the fire is, what the weather's doing at every place along the line, what the fuels are everywhere, uh, all of those uncertainties, even where the fire is, um, are going to, going to have a strong, huge influence on the fire behavior modeling that comes out of it. Without an analyst there to understand how that works and to interpret that for a decision maker, uh, you know, we're going to get very poor results. What you have to study, figure out what it's seeing and represent what is the fire seeing and how is it uh, responding to the various factors in reality and then can you replicate that for the right reasons with the model? Can you get pretty close to it? If you're not getting the right answer for the right reason, then uh, I don't care what how pretty your output is. And just a little bit of history, but in the old days when modeling was difficult, computers were slow and data were hard to come by, um, the analysts that volunteered to be analysts in this, in this area were driven by the, you know, their internal motivation to, to, and curiosity to produce good analyses. And, and, um, and so they were willing and committed enough to, to this uh, just by their nature to go through the rigors of gathering data and formatting all these data and feeding a model and waiting patiently for the thing to, to finish um, and going through all that. And so uh, we had, uh, and we still have, I'm not saying we don't have a good analysts, but uh, by, the, by the nature of that process, by as difficult as it was, uh, people who were, um, didn't have the heart for it 
and didn't have the interest in it, didn't self-select to do it. And so we ended up having a very good cadre of, of analysts that were willing to do that. Well, um, as progress is, we decided to try to make these systems more powerful by making the data um, more accessible. All right, Landfire came along, we had data everywhere. You didn't have to have a CD um, and know the person with the CD for the particular forest that you were dealing with. Um, we had Landfire data, we had uh, network access to uh, all the weather station data. Um, and this was a, a huge improvement. Um, and we made the WIFTA system that at sitting down there, you don't even have to carry your laptop with you, really. You can just get on there um, uh, from any old machine, just doesn't have to be very good at simulations at all. And you have all the processing power that you could want. Well, we've made it easier, a lot easier, and in doing so, potentially more powerful for the good analyst. But I think what we've also done is made it easy for uh, not so good analysts uh, for pretty much anybody to get output that can't be uh, obviously discerned as is not being useful. And I, I, I'm not sure that we're making the kind of progress and impact uh, on, on wildfire decision making that we thought we were making. Um, and having a lot of people out there interested in using WIFTAS, that's a good thing. But we need to find a way to ensure that people have the, the background and the interest and the, um, and the skills and experience to be able to use these models as best they can be used. I think we would find that we would get, we would get a lot better results, we'd have better credibility as, as a group of fire analysts if we set standards high and then we met them. 